Hello, and welcome to the Shipwreck Archive. Oh, here it is. The wreck of the pirate speaker. Enjoy. To say that the people of the island of Mauritius experienced some consternation in January 1702 would be putting it mildly. Two hunters had returned from their expedition early with news of a large pirate encampment on the eastern coast of the island. The two men had watched them closely for a short while, and they estimated that not only was the encampment 170 men, but they also weren't going anywhere. Their ship was wrecked nearby, and the pirates went back and forth between the wreck and the shore, stripping the wreck of what they wanted. This included, the hunters observed, a large number of weapons. If there was any danger of mistaking what sort of crew this was, that was proof enough that they were not normal merchants or a peaceful trading ship. The past year had actually been a good one up until the point of the wreck for Captain John Bowen and the piratical crew of the Speaker. Though Bowen was originally from Bermuda, he had left that island a long time ago, and on becoming a pirate he had gone further and further afield. The crew had been very active in the Indian Ocean, and had taken a good deal of treasure from several ships. They were on their way back to their home base of Madagascar when they had found themselves suddenly stranded on Mauritius. On the night of the 7th, there had been a storm blowing, which had not stopped the men from drinking. This combination ended in disaster on the reefs off the eastern shore of Mauritius. It is not known if any of the pirates died in the wreck. Pirates were not known for their record keeping, but the ship was a total loss from the start. It could be said that luck was still on the side of the pirate crew, however, and they were able to build a quick raft out of the wreckage of the ship, as well as launch two of the ship's small boats, and reach the shore. Once they were safely on shore, they started to build a camp, and hunted three head of cattle to feed themselves. That cattle on Mauritius belonged to someone else, was not a deterrent to a piratical crew. One of the first written records we have of the pirates' activities is the governor dutifully recording that three of the Dutch company cattle had been eaten unlawfully. The VOC liked to know such details. As for the pirates, food in hand, they then set about the important task of seeing what could be saved from the ship. Though some of their ill-gotten loot was now below water and past where they could reach, they were able to salvage at least one chest. Bowen had not been captain of the 500-ton speaker for long. Originally a French slave ship, the speaker had been captured in Madagascar by Bowen's former captain, George Booth, in 1700. Her original captain had made the mistake of angering the pirate crew and had paid for it dearly. He had been arrogant enough to fire cannons at them and be boastful about it. The pirate crew had had their revenge by collaborating with a local leader to remove the French captain from his ship. When the French captain died a few months later after this event, People commented that it had to at least partially be from embarrassment. Captain Booth had been the one to name the ship the Speaker. Its original French name has been lost to history, and we have no knowledge of its origin or history before it found itself in Madagascar. Unfortunately for Booth, his career was not to last long while being captain of the Speaker. In the same year, he was killed while negotiating for supplies in Zanzibar, and Bowen was elected captain in his place. Bowen had not been the crew's first choice of captain. The first man chosen had refused the position, but Bowen had been successful enough to cement his place as the crew's leader even after the loss of the speaker. It is doubtful that Captain Bowen's success as a pirate would have brought any comfort to the Dutch East India Company appointed governor of the island, even if he had known who he was dealing with. Mauritius was a very small settlement. And when he mustered everyone for the defense of the island against the invaders, he found himself in command of 55 settlers with 46 muskets and 46 cutlasses. Worse yet, many of the muskets were in such poor condition that they were useless. Not that everyone gathered to defend the island even knew how to operate a musket, much less shoot one. Governor Diodati had a fairly realistic idea of their chances against a vicious, well-armed enemy. And while preparing for the worst by fortifying and drilling the forces he did have, he sent his lieutenant governor to go negotiate with the pirates. In the meantime, he dutifully recorded the loss of three of Livioci's cattle to piratical appetites. 
The settlers of Mauritius were fortunate. Bowen and his crew were more than happy to negotiate, and the main things they asked for was the right to purchase supplies from the locals and access to a doctor. The governor went past that and opened his residence to sick or injured of the pirate crew so they could recuperate. That the crew of the now-wrecked speaker wanted to buy items rather than demand them with his island hostage was more than he could have hoped for. Perhaps as a way of speeding the pirates along their way, they certainly were not going to be able to leave on their own accord considering the condition of their ship. Governor Diodati sold Bowen one of the Dutch East India Company sloops as well as supplies needed to modify it and enlarge it according to their needs. By March, the pirates had a ship to sail in and Bowen was so touched by the hospitality that he had received on the island that he gifted the governor an additional 2,000 piest as a token of his appreciation. Within two weeks, the crew was again in Madagascar. Here, they captured the slave ship Speedy Return and took it as their new ship. Bowen was one of the most successful pirates of his era, and he continued to trade up in ships as he also accumulated more wealth until he did the most unusual thing for a pirate, and he retired. In 1704, Bowen decided that he had had enough of the sea, and he settled down in Madagascar. Unfortunately, this does not seem to have extended his life, as he died within six months of having retired. The crew that had sailed with Bowen carried on under Nathaniel North, another man formerly of Bermuda. They continued sailing in the last ship that Bowen had captured, the Brigantine Defiant, until it too was lost, and the remaining crew scattered with North making himself a pirate king in Ambo Nevula. He would eventually meet his end when he was so abusive to one of his wives that her family killed him. So ended the legacy of Captain Bowen, except for the remains of the speaker, which waited to be found at the bottom of the ocean. The bones of the speaker remained undisturbed until the 1980s, when a group of archaeologists were able to locate the wreck based on what had been written primarily by the Dutch settlers all those years ago. A majority of the planking of the ship and some of the cargo was removed by Bowen's crew the day after the wreck, but what remains shows the ship clearly once met her fate on the reef. So far, the ballast pile has not been found, but the cannons and anchors give a general map of where she rested. That the ship has been discovered is a speaker, there is no doubt. It is not only at the correct location, but it is also the only ship of that era known to have wrecked on that reef. If there was any doubt at all, the international assortment of artifacts that have been found in the wreckage, as well as a large amount of guns, speaks to the ship's nature. Not only are the cannons plentiful, but their international nature, much like the other items on the ship, suggests that they were taken by the pirates as prizes from the ships that they had captured. The speaker was the first pirate ship to ever be archaeologically surveyed, and further plans have been made to discover what the wreck can tell us about a population of early 1700s sailors who left very few first-hand accounts of their lives behind. If interested in more information on the life and death of Captain Bowen and his crew, his story is told in both the pirate's own book by Charles Elms and in the Under the Black Flag, by Don C. Seitz. Please see additional sources and information in the description below. Thank you for listening.